Good morning. Uh, would you bow with me and let's come to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we're here to thank you for who you are. We're here to worship you today. We just ask that you would touch our lives and hearts, that you would forgive us, that you would pour out your love in such a way that we would feel your Son Jesus and your Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you for all that you've done. We ask your blessing on this meeting. Be with, be with our pastor, Lord. We just pray that every word he says would penetrate our hearts because it's from you. Be with everything we do. Bless those here. We thank you for all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please rise and sing joyfully with all your hearts to our Lord of Lords and King of Kings.
Amen. Amen. Please greet each other in the Lord before you take your seat. Is it working? Oh, yes it is. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you here this morning. Beautiful day. What is this, the middle of September? Yeah. I think it is. I hope it stays that way. Till when? March? <laughs> That'd be good? All right, announcements today. I'm just going to go ahead and read them all. It makes it easier that way. And I know you can read too, but it gives me something to do while I'm standing up here. So. Sunday, next Sunday, that's, uh, oh, it says November 1st, November 1st to the 13th, the Christmas program practice during Children's Church. That should be going on about right now, right? Or pretty soon, anyway. Okay, Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Boxes are, are due back to church on the 15th, which is today. And the Fall Food Shelf Concert at Faith Lutheran Church in Dodd Center should be at today. It's at 2 p.m., See Dave about that. And our children's ministry, we know when that is. And the youth group, we know when that is. And don't forget Thursday night. That's our prayer and our praise and prayer service. And we really have a good time. I really enjoy going to that. You should try it. Some of you that haven't been there yet, you should try coming. You'd really enjoy it. Okay, uh, Planet Wisdom. Oh, Ladies Bible Study, you don't want to forget that. At Danella's, uh, the story is a video-based small group study that opens your eyes to God's master plan unfolding in the lives of Bible characters and in your own life. How is that going, Danella? Oh, you survived? Okay. <laughs> well, was it, was it, was it uh, this past week that I had to go over and jump for another car so my wife could come home? Battery was dead? Yep. All right. As we continue on, uh, December 4th and 5th is the Planet Wisdom Youth Conference at Grace Church in Eden Prairie. Uh, let Marcia know if you're going to attend. And bring a toy to church Sunday, which is on the 6th. Please remember that. Toys for Tots, who will be delivering them to the children in Dodge County. And then on uh, December 11th, the adult Sunday school class Christmas party at Brian and Bonnie's. Don't forget that. And then on the 20th will be children's Christmas program. Okay, if the ushers want to come forward, oh, just a minute. Are you trying to tell me something, Lori? I can't hear you. Yeah, I was going to pray when you guys got up here. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> I'm, you're changing things. I'm not used to this. All right. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for how you watch over and care for each one of us. We pray for those that, that are suffering this weekend from what happened in, in France. Lord, we know that you're watching over that situation. And, Lord, we, we also pray for America. We could see things like that happen here as we did in 9-11. Lord, we just pray that we'll see 
people turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we just ask your blessing upon the offering this morning as we pray in Christ's name. Amen. George. Well, uh, we want to thank those of you who are able to uh, put together a box this year or maybe even two boxes so that uh, we can send these boxes out through the Samaritan purse so that these back boxes will get into the hands of the needy children around the world. And from the bottom of our hearts, we want to say thank you for investing this way in the kingdom of God. Okay, what I want us to do now is we would like to, us to pray over the boxes in advance so that as the boxes will be going out this week, every single hand that will touch those boxes will be blessed by God in the process. As most of you know, in the past, I would have the deacons come up and my, the deacons and myself will lay hands over the boxes well, this year, I want us to try to do something different. I know that this comes from the Lord, and I just ought to do what God laid on my heart. Instead of the deacons and me doing it this year, I would like to invite the children to come up this year, to come here around the boxes with me, to lay hands with me, and you guys will be backing us up, and we will commit these boxes into the hands of the Lord. Amen? We'll pray for the drivers. We'll pray for the plane that will carry them. We'll pray for the children that will get them. So kids, would you please come up and join me as we pray over the boxes this year. And by the way, I'm going to need one of you, one representative from among you, to pray with me over the boxes. So you guys decide who is going to represent you 
You can come in a circle like that. Some of you can be here, right here next to me. I don't bite. Love you guys. <laughs> come over. Very good. Okay. Any of you wants to pray over the boxes, over the kids who, want, who will receive these boxes? Would you like to do that for us? Any of you? My daughter, I'm picking on you. You'll do it this year. <laughs> Cameron, you can do it. Would you do that? Just pray a simple prayer over the boxes that God will bless the kids who receive the boxes. Let's close our eyes as the children will be praying. And you can, lay, you can stretch your arms and your hands over the boxes as we pray. Okay. Father God, we thank you for the, everyone who collected the items to put in these boxes. Yes. And we bless that um, when they're on the plane that yes. they'll get to the kids safely and that they will have um, a very um, nice Christmas this year in his name. Amen. 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 I don't think there is a need for another prayer. Amen. He did a beautiful job. Thank you. (laughs) You can you can be seated now. Thank you kids. Good job. And would you please stand as we sing praises to the Lord. Would you please open your Bibles, church, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. 
We'll be reading a couple of verses this morning. Verses 13 and 14. As you can see in the bulletin, uh, we have two new babies that the Lord brought into our family, the church family. Uh, congratulations again to Truman and his family for the birth of Truman's grandson, baby Judah, Getty, Townend, Brazier. And then congratulations to uh, David and Sarah Fessenden for their birth of their son, Matthew David Fessenden. Isn't that amazing? And then keep, uh, keep also Jamie Rank in your prayers. Her and Nick and their family are expecting a boy. No, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. <laughs> I made prophecies before, and 99% of the time they came true. So I don't, I, I don't want to sound like a false prophet today, but... Uh, might be a boy. We'll see next, next month. <laughs> anyway, just keep Jamie in your prayers. Uh, babies do next month, correct? Yeah. Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 13 and 14. Here we go. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate... And difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Amen. Church, before I preach the word of God this morning, I have a couple of things that I want to let you know as part of my announcements. Uh, <clears throat> number one, Jean mentioned this already, and I want to reemphasize this because it is very important. Notice, please, that not only are we able to reach out to different parts of the road through those boxes, through the Samaritan purse boxes. But also we have a possibility and an opportunity right now to also reach out in, into our community. And what I mean by that is uh, about a month ago we were contacted by, by this big organization that I'm sure you are familiar with, uh, Toys for Thoughts. And they asked if our church, the First Baptist Church, which as far as I know right now, we are the only church in the community that has been contacted by them. They asked if our church would be willing to be a drop-off location for Toys for Tots. And of course we said yes, because we believe that what they are doing is good, and it's also a good testimony for us as a church, as a body of Christ in our community. So the First Baptist Church of Casson is a drop-off location for Toys for Tots this season. So spread this news out into the community. Uh, we'll give you the hours. The hours are, are very easy. A couple of hours on Sunday morning before church. An hour on Wednesday before ARC from about 5.30 to 6.30. And then an hour on Thursday before prayer meeting from 5.30 to 6.30. Spread the news in the community. If you hear anybody who wants to help a needy child this season, encourage them to donate toys through Toys for Tots. And all the toys will remain in our community right here in Dodge County. Isn't that good? It is good. Thank you. And then, remember that this afternoon at 2 o'clock, the Dodge... County Food Shelf, they have their uh, concert. They have two every year. One of them in the spring and one of them in the fall. Usually in the spring for the last few years being at the First Baptist. In the fall, they have it in Dodge Center. I would like to encourage you, if you can make it, to make it to that concert at 2 p.m. Let's support another good organization that does a lot of good in our community. Brother Dave... Uh, is the one leading the concert this afternoon. Pray also for Brother Dave as he's leading the concert and pray for the people who will be praising the Lord in that place. Amen? And then one more, and then I'll stop with the announcements. Uh, Lord willing, uh, this weekend, my wife and I, we will be going for a couple of days over the weekend to Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this will be the first time 
that I will get to see my parents this year. Okay? So what I want to say also by that, if, if God bless you with families, uh, uh, with loved ones around you, with children, with parents, with siblings around you, I hope you know how, how blessed and special you are. And uh, I'm, I get to see my parents once a year, and I thank the Lord for that. And I thank you for letting us go uh, over the weekend. Uh, we will, Michael and I will be leaving sometime on Friday. And Lord willing, we'll be coming back on Sunday night. Our plan, if everything goes according to our plan, uh, the plan, the plane, excuse me, the plane will be landing in Minneapolis, Minnesota on Sunday at about 11.30, a quarter to 12, midnight. So I know that you guys will all be awake then. I'll call each and every one of you and see how you're doing. Anyway, the reason, the main reason, usually we've been gone in December, not for Christmas, because I like to spend Christmas, as much as I love my family, uh, my blood family, I like to spend Christmas with my church. And... Um, so for the last years, we've been going for Christmas, excuse me, before Christmas, about two weeks before Christmas in, in Phoenix. Uh, this year, we are not able to go uh, before Christmas in December, and we are taking advantage of this opportunity to, to, go the, to go this weekend. The main reason we are going this weekend is because my two nephews, which most of you know, especially those of you who were in VBS, Couple of years ago, my two nephews, Andrew and Emmanuel, they will be getting baptized in their home church. Andrew is about 17, almost 18, and Emmanuel is about 16 right now. And the family asked us to be part of the celebration. And we cannot wait. We cannot wait to see my parents, to see my sister, to, be the, to see the church family. That's the church family that I basically... Uh, um, got to mature in after we left Romania. It's a Romanian church in Phoenix. I'm looking forward to preach the word of God in the Romanian language, both in the morning service and in the evening service. They are starting the evening service earlier because our plane leaves Phoenix at 8 o'clock. So they are starting the uh, evening service at 3 o'clock so that we can have service together and then Michael and I from there will go straight to the airport and catch the plane back home. We want to ask you to please keep my wife and I in your prayers. Please. We will be traveling with standby tickets. And that means that you know what that means. Right? So we have already in mind on which flight we want to get. But it is all in God's hands. We know that we have a powerful God. And almost in the past, on the flight that we wanted to get, 99% of the time we were able to get on that flight. And I know that that had to do with your prayers too. So thank you for that in advance. Next Sunday we have a, a visitor, a special speaker. His name is Dr. Ernie Schmidt. Dr. Ernie Schmidt was a professor at, um, at Faith Bible School in Iowa. When the president of Faith Bible School uh, retired, about a year ago, Dr. Ernie Schmidt was the interim president. Dr. Ernie Schmidt was also the guest speaker this year when we had our state meetings in Austin. A good speaker, a Bible scholar, a Bible teacher. I think that you will enjoy him a lot. Okay? Pray for him. Pray for me. I'll pray for you guys. Okay? We are done with the commercials. Okay? <laughs> now... The real stuff comes, which is the word of God. Well, church, I would like to start my uh, message this morning by telling you that if there is one thing, listen to this, if there is one thing that is part of the American culture or part of the American way, it's to have a lot of choices. Okay? We like having a lot of choices. The American culture offers us a lot of choices. Let me briefly give you some a few examples so that you can see what I'm talking about. For example, there are a lot of choices when it comes to the food that we eat. When it comes to the restaurants that we get to eat once in a while. 
There are a lot of choices when it comes to the milk that we drink. You go to the supermarket and there is fat-free milk. There is 1% milk. There is 2% milk. There is whole milk. You just move a few feet to the other side and there is the OJ section, the orange juice section. And there is Tropicana. Is that how you call it? Tropicana. And there is Florida. And there is orange juice with pulp. And there is orange juice without pulp. And there is orange juice with little pulp. Yeah. Okay. Those of you men, those of you men who are married and are here this morning, I want to ask you, have you ever tried going to Walmart or going to one of those supermarkets? Have you ever tried going there buying shampoo for your <laughs> wife? Shampoo for your wife. I've tried no. a few times, and almost every time I do, I am not successful. I go there, and I look, and I look, and I ask people, and about after 20, 25 minutes at times, honestly, at times I spend 15, 20 minutes just looking for something, and I say, yes, success, I found it. I go home, my wife looks through the grocery bags, and she says, honey, that was a good try, but this is not what I needed, right? Yeah, my friend, I believe that the point that I'm trying to make here is very clear. Having a lot of options is simply part of our way of life here in United States of America. But listen now to the news that I am going to share with you. It is important because it is based on the Bible and the Word of God. Listen to this. Jesus, the Son of God, the only one who is the way, the truth, and the life, he makes it very clear that when it comes to our lives, we do not have a lot of choices about how we live our lives. In fact, let me tell you this. Listen, please. When it comes to the choices and how we are going to live our lives here on earth, we only have one choice. And you know what that choice is, don't you? You are either going to follow Jesus or you are not going to follow Jesus. Okay? So here is what I believe this passage is about. By the way, we are coming towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount. We've been in the Sermon on the Mount for a few months. And I hope and pray that at least you were blessed as much as I have been blessed. Okay? We talked about giving and we talked about uh, uh, praying not to be seen by people. And we talked about meekness. And we talked about all of those things. And now notice please that as Christ is about to end the Sermon on the Mount, it's like he wants to drive home to us the gospel. This is what we have in this passage. Right here towards the, ser towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Christ wants to make sure that he nails down for us the gospel, which is the new good, the good news. And Christ uh, drives home for us the gospel in this passage by presenting to us, listen to this, the kingdom of God in terms of choices. Okay? And he makes it perfectly clear in this passage that you are either going to choose that which is going to lead you to eternal life in Christ or you are going to choose that which is going to lead you to eternal punishment. Or a life, an eternity without Christ. Okay? So this is what this passage is about. Now let's dig into the, to the verse. Are you ready? Verse 13. How about if we 
I was going to say, let's say it all together, but we, I'm afraid we have different versions, and it's going to be here. A, you know what I mean. I'm just going to read it, verse 13. I, I use the New King James Version. Listen, please. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by it. Notice, please. By the way, listen to this. What I see here is a, a, a pair of of a few things and let me tell you what I'm talking about the passage is talking here about two gates and then from the two gates we are moved to the two ways or two paths and then from the two paths we are moved moved to the two two crowds there are two crowds the few and the many and then from the two crowds we are moved to the two destinations and we'll talk a little bit more about this in detail in a few moments from now. But for now, just, just think of this. There are pair, uh, a few pairs here that Christ mentions, right? Two gates, two ways, two crowds, and two destinations. Okay? So here we go. The Bible says here that the first gate is what? Wide. Say it with me, wide. Wide. The first gate is wide, and the way is Broad. I don't know what comes to your mind. Uh, I like to think of things. Uh, God bless me with a visual, a good visual memory. Like I said, I, I won't be able to tell you in detail everything that I, I did every yesterday and every meeting that I was in and every paper that I signed, but I have a very good visual memory. Uh, I, if, if, if you spoke to me and we were face to face, I remember well what you said to me for the most part. Don't quote me on that old. But I remember well what you said and where we were two, three, four, five, six months ago. Okay? So anyway, I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of a gate that is wide. But to me, what came to my mind was, was one of those stadium gates. Stadium gates. You know, when you go to the stadium and all of a sudden, boo. The gate open and many people can get in at once. Huge stadium. What came to my mind was 1994 when I thought about this gate being wide. 1994 was the year when, when the World Cup soccer, the, the World Cup uh, soccer, uh, they played here in the United States of America in 1994. And at that time I lived in Chicago, Illinois. And at that time, I was 20 years old, and I loved soccer, and I still do. And my parents said, uh, John, our uh, birthday gift to you this year is uh, in advance. We know that you like soccer so much. We are going to help you get to Detroit. In fact, the, the stadium was in, um, in Pontiac, Michigan. That's where the big stadium was. By the way, at that time, Pontiac... Um, what was the name of it? Uh, forgot the name. Pontiac Superdome or something like this was the biggest stadium, the NFL stadium at that time in USA. 82 people could be seated at that stadium in 1994. So I still remember I got all pumped up and in Romania I was playing in, in that particular game that I went to. And up until that day, Romania was doing very well in the World Cup here in the States. And I was thinking, man, Romania is going to win this game again. And maybe we can go further towards the final. And uh, I painted my face with the Romanian flag. And I painted my shirt. And I painted my hair. And I had the, the flag. And I was one of those fans, you know what I mean? And I get there to the stadium, many fans, and me being one of them. The news was there, the news from, from Detroit. And seeing me how, how I was at that time with soccer, they came to me and they took an interview from me. And they said, if, if your team wins, if Romania wins today, you are going to be on the news tonight. And I said, yes. Well, guess what happened? Romania lost. <laughs> and they lost big time, 4-1. And then, and then I went home, you know, Anyway, but yeah, so I remember when that stadium opened and the gate opened, my reaction was, wow, 
Wow. My friends, this gate that Christ is talking about is wide. And when I'm imagining a wide gate in this case, spiritually speaking, I'm thinking that it is easy to find because it's wide. I'm also thinking that it is easily entered. You can bring anything along with you almost. And I'm also thinking that it is very inviting. Man, this wide gate is inviting. It looks beautiful. It, it seems beautiful. It seems that if you enter through it, boy, you are going to have a great time. And notice, please, also what the passage says. That this wide gate leads to what kind of a way or path? It leads to a wide path or to a broad path. Okay? This path, by the way, listen to this church. This is so important. This path does not require almost anything of those who walk on it. It requires no commitment. This broad way, this broad path requires no commitment. It requires no repentance. By the way, many people in our days, this is what they want to hear. Now, please don't get me wrong. When we come to the Lord, when we come to church, we ought to come as we are. Sinful in misery. But God has the power to clean us up and not to leave us in that state anymore. The problem is that many people out there, they, men, they want Jesus, they want to be blessed by Jesus, but they want to remain the same way. They want to still enjoy the pleasures of sin. And Christ says, that's not the way. Okay? That's broad way. Uh, uh, doesn't require commitment. Doesn't require repentance. Uh, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you wish. Right? Notice please though, that this narrow gate, there is a second gate. And there is a second path. This other gate is narrow. And the way, my friends, is what? Is difficult. This gate is different than the other gate. This path is different than the other path. And you know what that means, don't you? It means that you can only get through this gate one by one. The things that are not necessary, the things that could be a hindrance in your way, you leave them at the gate. You know what I was remembering when I was thinking about uh, this narrow gate? I was thinking about uh, uh, Europe and traveling uh, with those trains underground. Those of you who've been in Europe, in Germany, in Austria, in Romania, you go underground, it's called metro. And even in Chicago they have them. And then all of a sudden there is a gate, there is a barrier. And you have to put your ticket. You cannot be next to your wife, you cannot be with, next to your spouse. You cannot have your stroller, if you have a stroller, there is something else, they take your stroller on the other side. But through that gate, you can only go one by one. It is difficult. It requires commitment. It requires repentance. It requires, my friends, and we talked about this this Thursday in the prayer meeting, picking up your cross. It requires denying yourself. It requires then picking up your cross and following Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, notice please, that there are few on it. When it comes to the travelers, those who travel through those gates and through those paths, notice please the Bible says that through the, or on the broad way there are many, and on the narrow way, the difficult way, how many are there? How many? Few. There are few to find it. In fact, let me tell you this. In order for you to be on the wide or on the broad way, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. You are born on it, and if you don't do anything, you are going to die on it. You don't do anything. You find yourself on that path the moment you are born. On the other path, though, and through this other gate that is narrow and that is difficult, you have to do something. And in fact, enter by the narrow gate is a command. It is a command. 
It is what I mean by that. It means that you must enter. It's, it's not enough to have to be born in a Christian home. It is not enough that your daddy was a pastor and your mom was the choir director. It is not even enough that you were born in a church and the parents brought you here and they dedicated you to the Lord and you wound up singing in the children's choir and singing in the praise and worship team. It is not enough, church. There is an action that is required from each and every one of us. If, you, if we want to make it to that final destination, enjoying an eternity with the Lord, and that is you must enter it's a command. It is something else that means that it's not going to happen by accident. No. I come from a culture where I was born and raised. With 80% they believe they, that they were born Christians and they are going to die Christians. And that's wrong. It's not true. It's not biblical. You don't get through the narrow gate and through the narrow and on the narrow Path by accident. And it is something else about this. It's not going to happen. Apart from a commitment and a decision from your part. From your part. This is why it is a command. You know why this is a command? Because the gospel, my friends, is a command. We live in a society in which people don't like you to tell them anything. Oh, don't tell me what to do. I know where I'm going. I'm... I'm sure of myself. They don't like commands. But God's word is full of commands. And the gospel is a command. In what way is the gospel a command? It is what Jesus Christ said. Believe. Believe and repent. And you will be saved. Amen church? Okay. So here is what I understand from here. Practical stuff. It is not enough to listen to the preaching about the narrow gate. I'm so glad that you guys are here. And I always tell people that I'm glad that we love the word of God. It's good. But it's not enough to listen about the preaching of a narrow gate. About a narrow gate. It is not enough to study about the narrow gate. It is not enough to admire the narrow gate. It is not enough to admire the gospel. It is not enough to admire the work that Jesus accomplished on the cross through his death and resurrection. It is not enough to think that Jesus was a good man that was a very ethical man. It is not enough. It is not enough to admire the virtues of Jesus. My friends, it is not enough. A lot of people admire Jesus as a prophet. A lot of people admire what Christ accomplished on the cross. It is not enough. Let me tell you this. It is what I believe. A lot of people in our days don't like to hear this. But this is the truth. I believe that, the, that hell is going to be literally filled with people who admire Jesus, who admire the work of Jesus, who admire the teachings of Jesus, who admire the ethics of Jesus, but didn't lean on Jesus and didn't trust Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Hell is going to be filled with such people, my friends. Here are a few verses that I want to share with you here. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My friends, there is no compromise on this. I have friends, God blessed me with friends all over the world. And uh, there are some friends in which we, some friends that I have with which I may disagree on certain things. I have friends who don't believe like I believe uh, uh, in, in the rapture, in the pre-millennial uh, rapture and, and stuff like that. Don't believe, don't believe. I have other friends who be even believe that they, you can lose your salvation. Okay, I will see them in heaven someday in spite of what they believe. Okay, so we can, we can disagree on certain things. But there is one thing that we should never, ever, ever compromise on. And that is that Jesus alone is 
the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Glory be to his name. Amen? In fact, when you look, you look a little bit lower at the passage. You, you, you see the false teachers. You go down, go home and look a little bit. Follow verse 15, 16, 17. And you'll see the false teachers. And all those false teachers, they were trying to teach people another Christ. Another way to get to heaven. And Jesus makes it clear that he is the only one. Okay? John 10, 1 says, Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door, Christ says. If any man tries to come in any other way, that man is what church? Is a thief and a robber. And then in the gospel of, excuse me, in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says that there is no salvation in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen, church. My friends, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Apostle uh, Paul comes and tells Timothy, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. What's his name, church? The man, capital M, referring to Jesus Christ. The man. Christ Jesus. Amen? So Christ and Christ alone is the gate. I know that I'm preaching to the crowd probably today in this building, but the sermon reaches more than this building, right? A lot of people out there, the sermon goes on the World Wide Web, and we never know how people get a hand of this. So this is why me and you need to pray that all those men and women out there who get to listen to the gospel, we'll get right with God. Amen? Amen. So Christ and Christ alone is the gate. This is what I understand from here. There is no other way than in Christ and through Christ to be saved. Right? This is why, my friends, in a way, this way is narrow. By the way, this is the word of the living God. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ savingly and you will enter. You don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not enter. There is no other way. There is no other deviation apart from the person of Jesus Christ, from the work of Jesus Christ, from the gospel of Jesus Christ. By faith and through grace alone will lead you to heaven, okay? First John chapter 1 verse 7 says that Jesus Christ and his blood alone, the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Nothing else. His blood is the only agent that has the power to wash us clean. We have a song that goes something like this. Sing it with me. If you believe it and if you've been cleansed, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me cleanse again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that cleans me white as snow. No other fountain, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Okay? Okay, so notice please, the second way is the way, the way that leads to life. It's the way that leads to life. What life are we talking about? Eternal life. Eternal life. So each one of these two ways, my friends, have a destination. The narrow way has a destination. The broad way has a destination. The broad way leads to what, church? It leads to destruction. Another synonym for destruction will be ruin. By the way, let me tell you what I mean by destruction. By destruction, I don't mean non-existence. 
Because some people out there, this is what they believe. Oh, I can live whatever way I want. And at the end, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, I die. And they put me in a grave or they cremate me. And I am done. That's it. That's it. That's not a destruction that Christ is talking about. Not non-existence. Thus, Broadway leads to destruction. Destruction, my friends, in the sense of eternal, unending death and separation from God. This is what destruction means. Okay? Separation from God. The Bible says that the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. What I'm preaching today, my friends, this is old style preaching. This is what some people out there call it, old style preaching. I don't think that it is an old style preaching. It is the Bible. It is the word of God. It is the pure, infallible word of the living God. And I don't think that any of us want to spend our eternity in the, at this destination, destruction, where the worm does not die, right? And where the fire is not quenched. Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy, Lord, upon our family members, upon our neighbors who are not right with you right now. Amen? And then there is another destination, this other path, this other way, which is narrow, leads to what, my friends? It leads to life. What kind of life are we talking about? eternal life with Jesus Christ. I go to prepare a place for you. And after I go to prepare a place for you, I will return, Jesus said. And I will take you to be with me. So where I am, you will be also. So here is the deal. Two gates, the broad and the narrow way. There is no other gate. I don't care what anybody else says. Two ways. The hard way and the easy way, there is no middle way. I don't care what anybody says out there. Two crowds, the large crowd and the small crowd, there is no neutral group. Choose you today whom you want to serve, Joshua said. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Amen? And there are two destinations, either destruction Eternal separation from God or eternal life. There is no third alternative. Okay? So I pray, church, that we will take this message to heart. And I have to tell you this as I'm closing here this morning. Here is what I believe with all of my heart. Nothing, and I mean nothing, in all of your life is of greater significance and of greater importance uh, than this choice of whether you will follow Jesus Christ or you will not follow Jesus Christ. The Sermon on the Mount is not about a call to improve our life a little bit. The Sermon on the Mount and the Word of God as a whole is about a call to a life that is radical, that is an absolute discipleship. So the choice, my friend, is yours and the choice is mine two ways and what and excuse me two ways and one choice the question is what will you choose how about if we say it today with joshua as for me as for me and my household as for me and my house we are choosing to serve the lord amen how about if we close with a prayer and with a song first before the prayer, would you please stand up? And by the way, the gospel demands a clear response from us. If you are here today, you may have been in church for years, but until today, you haven't looked at this passage, or you haven't looked at the ways of God this way, and God talked to you. Make the right response. Choose the right thing so that you would spend an eternity in heaven someday. I would welcome the opportunity to talk to you after the service and get to share more with you about Jesus Christ and his ways. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, 
Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. If any of you want to come to the altar this morning, this is a song of response to pray for you, for your household, for your neighborhood, for our community, for our country. This is the time to talk to the Lord. 489. humble cry this morning for those of us father who are saved and we are delighting in your presence this morning we thank you for this free gift of salvation that is already ours in Christ Jesus we thank you for the cross we thank you for the sacrifice on the cross we thank you for the shed blood on the cross and father this morning we also want to take a moment to weep and to pray over our community over our neighborhoods over our siblings maybe over our parents in some cases over our children over our neighbors, over our classmates and co-workers who right now are still walking on the broad way. Father, just like you brought us through the narrow gate and on the narrow path, you can do it for them. We know that you could because you are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we pray that right now you will soften their hearts even as we speak Holy Spirit you have the power to convict them you have the power to uh, make them right with you father we leave them into your hands spouses children 
friends, neighbors, parents who are not saved right now. Father, we desire to be in heaven with them. Father, we love you and we thank you for the work that you've begun in us. And we ask you, Father, to fulfill your work in the life of those people who right now do not know you as their Lord and Savior. And we have faith that you can do it because you who begun a good work in us, you will complete it. We love you, Lord. We pray now that you'll give us a great lunch. We pray for this meeting at 2 o'clock today in Dodge Center, that you'll bless it, that you'll bring the people in, that you'll bless the Dodge County food shelf, bless, bless that brother Dave as he's leading the meeting, and bring us back in church safe and sound. And in the meantime, Father, as we go out of here, help us to remember that we are the army of God, that we have a message, and that we ought to let our light shine so that those people will see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our wonderful Lord and Savior, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.